Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. David Pugh. I am a staff scientist at the Calix Visualization Core Laboratory. This afternoon, I'm going to pick up with uh, a series of videos on how to get AlphaFold uh, running on IBEX. So I've made a couple of videos uh, already, mostly focused on getting your uh, the required data downloaded and making your uh, Conda environment set up and everything ready to go. So now I'm going to walk you through the changes that I needed to make to the AlphaFold CASP 13 um, code in order to get it to run properly on IBEX for CPU only. Okay, so here I've pulled up the repository that we've been working with. So this is the um, IBEX training slash DeepMind research fork of DeepMind's original uh, repository. So this is where I'm making all the changes that are required to get this um, up and running uh, on IBEX. So um, in this repository, or in uh, the IBEX training version of the repository, I have um, added two files to the AlphaFold CASP 13 folder. Um, so one is run underscore eval dot sbatch. So this is going to be our Slurm job script that we're going to use to launch the AlphaFold training, um, or sorry, I should say the AlphaFold, AlphaFold inference job. And the other is the run eval dot shell script, which is a modified version of the, the, the version of the same script provided by DeepMind. So before I go to the modified version, I'm going to go back to um, DeepMind's original version and show you the parts that needed to be modified. So here's the run eval script. Okay. So um, this is a very complicated script. Uh, there's quite a lot going on in here. It tightly couples um, several things, which I think would be better if they were uncoupled. And so I'm making changes to their running script to make it run um, uh, a little bit more easily on IBEX. And then we're going to talk about uh, in a follow-on video about how to actually use uh, GPUs efficiently um, with this script. And that requires some more substantial changes. So. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need to change is some uh, paths to the basic model weights uh, and the data that we use. Um, we are installing it in particular directories um, inside of our AlphaFold uh, project, not in the, the same kind of directories that they use. Um, so we need to make some changes to these environment variables here. Um, I think all of these will need to be slightly modified. Uh, the second is that they've embedded this um, environment installation instructions inside of the run eval shell script. And I think they were kind of, the idea was that this would just make it easier for people to replicate. You just run this one script and then it installs everything and does all of the, and runs the job. But in practice, that's actually, um, I think, uh, not the right way to do it. It tightly couples two things that don't need to be tightly coupled. So we're going to strip out entirely this uh, set up and install virtual environment independencies. So we've already done that with Conda and I showed you how to do that in a previous video. So we're just gonna delete that section entirely so that we don't, uh, that we don't run it. Um, other changes that we need to make. So we don't wanna write uh, the outputs of this job um, to our home directory, which is the default setting that they have here. We want to write the outputs inside the project directory itself where we're running. So in this case, that's going to be inside our alpha fold cast 13 folder. It doesn't make sense to just write these output files to some place on your home directory. It's much better to keep them inside a results directory that we'll create here inside the alpha fold cast 13 folder. Um, for now, the, the rest of this um, job script we're going to leave as is, but I'm going to point out a few things that are problematic that we're going to need to change in order to run this job on GPUs. So first, the, the bulk of the work is done here inside this for loop. So this for loop uh, runs a task called contact prediction um, using pre-trained uh, models whose weights are provided as part of the data files that we've already downloaded. And we do four replicas of this process. And each of them are launched as a background job. 
So that's what this little uh, and character is at the end of this, um, this long complicated command. So that means that this process will be launched in the background. And then instead of waiting for this Python process to finish before moving on to the next part of the bash script, it'll just immediately move to the next part. So we're going to launch um, two, uh, two Python scripts for each iteration of the loop immediately as background tasks. So this is going to immediately spawn uh, eight background tasks. And then once that's done, it's going to come down here and immediately spawn a ninth task also in the background. So there's going to be kind of like nine little jobs that are going to be started inside of our single um, job that we're going to ask for from Slurm. And then we're going to wait. And basically, this script is just going to sit here and wait forever um, until all of these nine jobs are finished. And then, and only then, once those nine jobs are finished, you're going to use some of the outputs of those jobs to uh, run the ensembling program, to create the distrograms, and then finally, um, you're going to do the same for the output of the, the torsion uh, model. And then you're going to paste these maps together to create the results from the paper. OK. So I'm going to show you how to run the script to launch it with, to launch the job for, for CPUs. Um, and it's going to take about two hours uh, on CPU. On We're going to ask for, I think, about 10 CPUs or something like that. And it's going to take about two, two hours uh, to do all of this work. Um, in a follow-on video, I'm going to show you the changes that need to be made to this, um, this evaluation script so that we can significantly accelerate that process on GPUs. And just as a preview, one of the problems that we're going to run into, if you just run this script as is and you try to make the modifications suggested in their, the readme file by effectively just changing CPU equals true to CPU equals false here, here, and here, then you're going to overwhelm the memory available on your GPU card and your job will fail. And we're going to see an example of that job failing. It fails fairly quickly. So we'll actually run it, see that it fails, and then talk about how uh, the changes that we need to make um, in, order to, uh, in order to make this work for GPUs. But for now, I'm just going to show you how to run with, with CPUs. OK, so that was the the DeepMind version. So if you go back and now we can look at the run eval shell script with my modifications. Uh, and the first thing, again, you'll notice is that I made some changes to these directory paths to point them to the locations where we have installed the data, um, which is slightly different. Um, same here with this target path is slightly different. And the output directory, we're putting it inside a results directory, which is inside the alpha fold CASP 13 directory. Um, and then the rest of the script is the same. I made no changes uh, for the, the rest of the script. So I'll save those to the next video where we talk about how to run this with GPUs. OK. So um, now here I'm logged in on IBEX. Uh, the easiest way to, to get these changes if you're following along from the, the previous video is to just pull the changes down from Git. So if, in the, if you follow the instructions and use Git clone to clone um, the IBEX training DeepMind research fork um, down onto, uh, onto IBEX, then if you just do a Git, you, well, you need to change directories and be inside your, uh, your clone of the DeepMind research repository under your username on IBEX. But then once, you, once you're there, you can just do a git pull x theirs. And what this will do is it will pull down any changes um, from, the, um, from this fork, and it will overwrite any changes that you have made locally to files where there's a conflict. So if you had tried made your own changes to, um, to uh, this file, this run eval shell script, then those changes will just be blown away and you'll be left with the changes that I've made, which are the ones that work. Um, 
Alternatively, you could just clone the repo again uh, if you don't, or you could use, um, or you could resolve the merge conflict yourself. So in this case, obviously my repo is already up to date, so there's nothing for me to do. Um, but if you run that command, it will overwrite uh, your local changes with the changes that I've made. And so now all we're gonna do is we're going to use um, sbatch to launch the alpha fold run, dot eval, run underscore eval dot sbatch script. Yeah, and we'll just hit enter. And there our job has been submitted. Just check that it's running and it is running. And now if we go and we'll just take a look at the uh, run eval sbatch script and all this does is requests two hours of time. We're gonna ask for uh, 10 CPUs per task and eight gigs of memory per CPU. Uh, this is just going to be a kind of a proportional amount of memory given the number of CPUs that we're asking for. Um, I picked 10 because 10 is about one fourth of a node uh, for one of our CPU, uh, one of our CPU nodes, um, at least the, the Intel nodes. Um, and that seemed like a reasonable amount of resources to, to ask for. I also wanted the job to start quickly. So I didn't want to ask for like a full node or anything like that. You can experiment with, with changing the number of CPUs to a higher number and see if it, the job runs any faster. But with 10, it's going to take about, uh, about two hours. Um, and I don't really think adding more CPUs is going to speed it up uh, substantially. OK, and then um, we basically set some environment variables. Then we activate the Conda environment, and then we just run the shell script provided by DeepMind with the minor modifications that, that we've already discussed. OK. Now, I'm going to show you a little tip for how to check what's going on with your running job. So here we can see that our job has been running um, uh, for about a minute and a half now. And we would like to kind of see what's going on in our job. So one of the things that um, that you can do is you can do uh, S run and you can pass in the dash dash job ID and then pass in, uh, you can either copy paste or just type in the job ID. And then we're going to do dash dash PTY H top user and then your user. And what this is going to do is it's going to run the command h top dash u ibex training or your username. So you should put your username there. And it's going to run the command h top within the running allocation that we have, uh, um, that we've gotten for the job that we just launched. So for this job ID. And this is a way to kind of see what's going on in the job. So if we run this, so we're immediately dropped into, um, I'm going to make this a little smaller just so I can see what's going on. And so then what you can see is, so we have all of these processes. Uh, some of them are running, some of them are not. Some of them are using CPU, some of them are not. But you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. 11, 12, 13. So there must be some tasks on here that are being run by other users. Um, and, but most of these uh, cores are the cores that are running for our, our job, um, I think. So, and you can see here all of the, the, the different processes that are run. Well more than 10 processes have been started. Um, in part, if you remember back, so even though we've only allocated 10 cores, um, we have launched um, uh, two Python jobs per iteration of the for loop. And there were four iterations of the for loop in the bash, in the bash script. Um, let me go back to it. So we immediately launched, so there are four, four loops or four iterations of the for loop and two processes started per iteration. So that's eight. And then the ninth is this one here. And all of these were launched immediately. So we basically launched nine processes 
on top of uh, 10 CPU cores. And, um, and then each of those processes are going to do you know, whatever they're going to do as part of running that, uh, that Python script. And so that might start spawn other processes or, or things like that using TensorFlow. OK. And when you're done with this, you can just press Q. And that will exit you from the, uh, from the allocation. And then we can do clear to get back some of our space. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger now and shrink the size of the window. OK. So let's take a look at uh, what's going on in the alpha directory. So what you'll see is once you start the job running, you'll get your uh, slurm.error and slurm.out file. And so these are the logs for your job. And if you take a look at what is in the slurm.error file, you'll see there's loads and loads and loads of stuff in there. So this is where most of the logs are going to go. Um, so you can scroll through here. There's a bunch of TensorFlow logs. There's a bunch of stuff that's echoed out from the Python script itself. A whole bunch of stuff is being, being logged there. And then if you go and you look at the out file, um, this is where the kind of the progress is, is printed. So we've launched all the models for replica 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we're just waiting for them to complete, basically. And so once they're complete, so here we are down here, we're at basically waiting in, at this point. So we're going to wait for probably an hour and a half or so, uh, maybe a little less. And once that's done, then you'll run this ensembling code down here. And the ensembling code um, does not take nearly as long. So most of the work is actually just doing this inference step here. Um, which is using the pre-trained models provided by uh, DeepMind based on the training that they did for the AlphaFold project. And that takes the longest. But once that's done, everything else goes pretty quickly. OK, uh, so that's it. Um, you know, and after an hour and a half or so, the, these jobs will complete. And you can. Um, the, the jobs will complete, and you can go through the, the results and take a look at, at the results there. And if you want to run the same code but for a different target, you can, of course, come up here and change the target. Um, and then I'm not sure if you can actually change these, these model weights to uh, different numbers here. Um, I have to be honest, I'm not terribly familiar with the AlphaFold code itself. Um, and this is not inside my area of expertise, but I just wanted to show you how to get it running on IMAX. OK, hopefully that's enough for you to get going. Um, and like I said, in a follow-on video, I'll show you how to accelerate all of this using GPUs. That requires um, quite a bit more um, changes to this run eval shell script, um, unfortunately. So I couldn't do it all in one video. OK, so bye for now. Uh, good luck getting AlphaFold running uh, on IBEX.